Welcome to a book haul. I'm back with a book haul. I haven't really been posting many book hauls this year because I've not been buying too many books. I have been going to the library a lot though, so this is mainly a library book haul, but I'm also going to show you some of the books that I've bought from charity shops and such. I've bought a couple of books brand new as well, just because I felt like it. I don't really feel the need to justify it at all. I was in the mood to buy some books, so I bought some. I am going to be honest, I'm not doing great with my zero TBR challenge this year. My TBR is mainly stagnating. I'm probably going talk about this separately in another video because this is a book haul that's not really the place to talk about how I'm reducing my TBR so I'm planning on posting an update on that maybe in a couple of weeks time so stay tuned for that if you really enjoy zero TBR updates and TBR sort of reduction updates I've got some ideas of things I want to do but without further ado let's get on to the books. The first book I picked up was from The Works and that was Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. This is the third book in the Bright Falls I think series. It follows the third friend in this friendship group and I believe she's like into theatre or something or the love interest is. I really enjoy this series. I have really enjoyed the first two books. I gave both of them I think four stars. They're just really light reads and I'm hoping to read this one very soon. My husband bought me a book because <laughs> I think he was trying to make me feel better and he just picked a random one from my wish list and I'm really glad that he did. He picked up Daughter of the Beast which is one of the Spiffbo, SPFBO finalists. I don't really know what this one's about. I know that it's the first in a trilogy and it's self published, which is why it's part of the Spiffbo self published fantasy blog off finalist list. It says here that the main character is Sleepy Village is raided by warrior women of the ancient wilds. The main character is taken and trained to hunt, to fight, and to kill. Something, something about a sisterhood, raiding, and a path to glory. Again, don't really know much about it. Not many people have read it because it's obviously a self published book and those aren't too popular on BookTube. But I think from what I've seen, the people who have been reading through the finalist list have really enjoyed this one. So I'm looking forward to picking it up. My husband chose well. And because he did that, I decided to to buy another Spiffbo finalist book that was on my wish list and that is Murder at Spindle Manor. I really want to read this one soon so you may see it in my wrap up. I've just realised there's a spider on the cover and I really hate that so I'm just going to cover that up. This one is a mystery fantasy kind of book I believe. It says here that the main character Isabeau is a huntress. She's been tracking down an insidious beast that wears the skin of its victims. Anyone in Spindle Manor could be this beast and then there's a dead body and someone's been killed. So yeah, really looking forward to reading this one. I feel like this one might win the awards because everyone has seemed to love this one so I'm really looking forward to trying it hopefully very soon. I picked up From Below by Darcy Coates. This is a ocean horror book about a ship which disappeared and then reappeared again thousands of miles of course and the main character and her team of divers go down there and then creepy things start to happen. I really enjoy space horror and I love ocean horror as well because space and the ocean are the two things that creep me out the most. I don't really care about ghosts and paranormal stuff like whatever, I, they just don't scare me. Serial killers, not a big deal, but the ocean is terrifying. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. I really want to read it soon. I also picked up The Mysterious Double Death of Honey Black. This is a mystery time travel kind of book, I think. It says here that Lily Jones is living her dream life in LA. She is working as a chambermaid at a Beverly Hills hotel and her job brings her to the room where infamous starlet Honey Black was killed 70 years ago. After a bump to the head, Lily finds herself transported to Hollywood in 1949 and and Honey Black is two weeks away from being murdered so she goes back in time and has to try to figure out what happened and maybe prevent her death. I obviously picked this one up from the works as well and it was only £2.50 so yeah I think that was a bargain. I also picked up Abandoned by Blake Crouch for £1 which is great. This is another NetGalley book that I have that I haven't read. I have started it, I'm 56 pages in but I'm just not sure I'm loving it. I started it as part of the Doer's 24 hour readathon and it just wasn't very compelling so I'm going to give it another 50 pages and maybe I'll just give it back to the charity shop and like you can have it or maybe I'll just really enjoy it, who knows. And then I bought a couple of non-fiction books. The first one was Buried by Alice Roberts. I listened to this author's other book, I believe her debut which was called Ancestors. In that one and in this one she is talking about archaeological finds in order to tell a story. I think this one's telling stories about how people were buried and what we can learn from such things. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I will probably listen to it as an audio book but I'm glad that I found this in the charity shop so I can add it to my collection. And then the final book that I bought for myself, I think, I'm just having a quick look around, I think this is all of them, is Death in Yellowstone <laughs> because why not? I recently read Trail of the Lost in March. I was really interested in the kind of terror and horror that came with hiking such a long trail and all the things that could go wrong. I found it so, so interesting. And I really enjoyed reading about those people's stories, or enjoyed. I really appreciated and respected 
learning about what they went through. So I picked this one up. It's kind of a similar thing. It says here it's about accidents and foolhardiness in the first national park. And it talks about like nature horror or nature related deaths in part one. And then part two is death by man, which I guess is about like killers and fights and arguments and stuff. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I think it'll be really good. And those are the ones that I've bought. The rest are all library books and there are a lot of them because my library system is great. First one I picked up was Arthur and Teddy are coming out. This one is one that one of my local book clubs is reading. I'm probably not going to go to the book club because I don't know anyone there and I'm a bit scared but I saw that they were reading this and I really like the idea. So this is about I think a granddad called Arthur and his grandson called Teddy maybe the other way around and the granddad comes out as gay and then his grandson confines in him and is like actually i'm also gay can we talk about it and then they bond over that i think this sounds really heartwarming and uplifting so i'm looking forward to reading it i picked up something is killing the children volume six which i've already read and it's a very fast-paced book this series is a graphic novel series about monsters and monster hunters the main character is a monster hunter and is killing monsters who are killing children. I also picked up Sweet Tooth volume one and volume two. Apparently this has been turned into a Netflix series as well, but I've never heard of it. Um, I just thought it looked like something that me and my husband would enjoy reading. So picked it up. I think it's like a post-apocalyptic fantasy book maybe. I also picked up three books for the women's prize list. I'm not going to get to all of them anytime soon before the announcement because the shortlist is being announced this week but I still kind of want to read them anyway because they do sound quite good at least most of them do this first one is called Restless Dolly Maunder and it's set in Australia it sounds just like a quiet literary fiction book maybe I'll enjoy it it doesn't really sound like my kind of thing this one however does this is called And Then She Fell and it says here that it's told in the author's raw and darkly funny, funny voice and infused with Native American myth and legend and then she fell as a wild, fierce novel. So I'm very intrigued by this one. It's about someone who starts hearing voices of some sort, I think. And it sounds very mysterious and it's kind of about inheritance and womanhood and false allyship. So I've got high hopes for this one. I think this one does sound great. And then I've also got Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster, which is about someone who says they've lived several lives before or something. They're in a retirement home and they're like, I'm ancient, I've lived so many lives before. And I think people are wondering if these stories are true or if it's just like an old person telling fibs. So I think this one sounds good as well, actually it does. I also picked up from the library, The Women. I need to return this soon because I think there are like 25 people in the queue, but my loan doesn't run out until next week. So I'm gonna try to read it before I have to return it to the library. This is by Kristen Hanna, who is one of my favorite authors. She writes really good historical fiction. This one is about a nurse who goes to Vietnam during the Vietnam War and then comes home and is basically unappreciated, like a lot of the other women who had to go to war. And people always talk about war veterans and the men who came back with severe PTSD and stuff, but no one really talks about the women. So I think this one sounds really good. I'm really looking forward to it. I think I'm going to love it. Don't see why not. I've also got Pets, and this one sounds a bit like My Dark Vanessa, which is one of my all-time favorite books. And I don't know if this is gonna live up to that, so I'm trying not to compare the two. This is about a young girl who is groomed by a teacher. I think. It says here, Justine is drawn to her glamorous, charismatic new teacher and longs to be her pet. However, when a thief begins to target the school, Justine senses that something isn't quite right grows ever stronger. So I wonder if this is kind of about an old woman who is the teacher and she's manipulating Justine. I'm just guessing. I think it sounds quite horrific and it's probably about sort of guilt, betrayal, loyalty, all of that good stuff. I'm looking forward to reading this sometime soon. I also picked up, these are all horror books actually next. I don't know what's happened. I don't know why I've done this. I've picked up A Haunting in the Arctic. This is about a haunting in the Arctic. Um, I just picked this one up because I saw it that was available, so I thought, why not? So it's set in 1901 on a whaling ship battling through the unforgiving North Sea. A woman is attacked and dragged there against her will. It's just her and the crew. And then decades later, the ship is found still drifting across the ocean. It's deserted, just one body is left on board. And his face and feet have been mutilated, his cabin locked from the inside. Everyone else has vanished. This sounds so creepy. I think it's set off the coast of Iceland, it looks like. And I've been to Iceland, I love it. It's such a wonderful country. I've never been technically off the coast of it. <laughs> I flew in. But I think this is going to be a very atmospheric one. I'm really looking forward to reading this. And then I picked up the reformatory. Reformatory? This is about a haunted school, I think. A segregated reformatory, um, which is a chamber of horrors haunted by the boys that have lived there. The main character, Robert, must enlist the help of the school's ghosts 
only they have their own motivations. I've not heard loads about this one, but people who have read it seem to have really enjoyed it. And it's a chunky one, so I'm gonna get to it. Just, I don't know how quickly. It depends how I'm feeling with all of these other books. And then finally, the final book of this haul, and the final book that I got from the library, is The Forest Demands It's Due. I got this one from NetGalley as well, a while back and didn't read it. This is obviously a horror book, if you couldn't tell by the cover. It says that it's set in Vermont at a place called Regent Academy, which has a long and storied history in this small town, as does the vast forest that surrounds its campus. The school is known for moulding teens into world leaders, but its past is far more nefarious. Something something, a centuries long curse is found and there's a horror hidden within the forest. I don't know why I'm picking up a load of horror books, but it seems to be what is drawing me in right now. And as a mood reader, I just have to follow my mood, so that's what I'm gonna do. So that's my book haul. I don't really know what's going on here, there's all sorts, and I really need to stop buying books as usual, but I feel like I've done quite well to be fair. I've only bought eight books since my last haul, seven, and then my husband's bought me one, so eight all together. And I think that's actually quite good going. I'm quite proud of myself. Again, I said earlier on, I'm gonna do a kind of zero TBR wrap up update video um, in a few weeks time to talk about how I'm doing. Um, if you want me to prioritise any of these, if you think I will enjoy them, let me know in the comments below. I'm always here for recommendations and advice. And yeah, I think that's it. I need to get reading now because I need to return some of these library books soon and I just haven't really made a dent. So I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all in the next video. Bye.